there are things in this life that you and I, we just do instinctively. We have trained ourselves. We have developed these characteristics. We have instilled in our lives knowledge so that we have certain habits in this life so that we know what we're going to do, what's going to take place. And there are certain things in our lives that are just natural to us. It's second hand. Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Burns and thank you for joining me on Walking with the Word. Because today we're going to try to develop this idea of developing and maintaining Christian habits. Now I want to remind you, whether you're new to our program today or whether you've listened for a long time, that you can go to our website, www.twtv.org. Click on the survey tab and there you can suggest what you would like to be taught, the subject matter. You can pick Bible verses, Bible chapters, or even things that are difficult to study or things you love to hear. And we'll eventually get them into the rotation of this program. As we sit right now, we've got about 100 to 120 something items that we're working through trying to get on this program. But don't let that make you weary. Go to that survey tab, fill that out and we'll make it happen eventually on our program. We want you, the listener, you to participate with us so that this program can be something that you would love to have, to study. It's 15 minutes of your day on Mondays. Simple, easy, and to the point. As we think about our program today, we're trying to instill characteristics that we can develop and maintain in our lives. Now, what I want to do is I want to give you five things, five habits that we can maintain And then what I want us to understand is as we develop them, how do we maintain these habits in our lives? Here's the five. We need to grow in faith, grow in prayer, grow in morals, grow in truth, and grow in control. As we think about Christian habits that we can develop and maintain. Let's think about faith. Here's two Bible verses. Hebrews 11.6, Romans 10.17. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Number one, when you think about faith, I want you to ask this question to yourself. What is faith? Is faith an emotion? It's something that I feel. It, it's something that excites me. It's something that encourages me or even sometimes discourages me in life. Is faith something that is uh, impressionable led? In other words, when I'm around other people, I'm encouraged to do what's right. Or is faith something much more simple in definition but much more complicated in application? Is faith something that is developed based on evidence. You see, Hebrews 11, 6 tells us that it is impossible to please God without faith because the one that comes to God must believe, listen to this, that He is and what He's going to do. That He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. There's this idea here in Hebrews 6 of of chapter 11 that these people who have faith They must know who God is and what He's going to do. But I ask you this question. How do we know what God is going to do? Is it an emotion? Is it something that God tells me? Or has God given you and God given me, the world, something that we can use to develop a faith? There's Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Faith, as we see it defined here, is this idea that we can take the evidence that God has given and we can develop a faith. But in our idea today is this concept of habits that we can develop and maintain. The question becomes, how can you, how can I, how can we develop and grow in faith? I want to tell you something simple. Keep going to church. Go to Bible class. Go to worship. Go to gospel meetings, go to seminars, go to lectureships, go to everything that you can. Go to singings, prayer nights, even things that have nothing to do with study. Be involved in the church. Number two, when you're at home, spend time in Bible study. You don't have to do this as a whole family, but have a time set aside where the Bible is discussed or the Bible is read. Spend time in God's Word. You see, if you and I want to develop faith, 
to have this habit of growing our faith, we have to be people who develop ourselves inside of God's Word. There's number one, grow in faith. Number two, be a people who grow in prayer. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. Here in this occasion, Paul is writing to those in Thessalonica and he's telling them, at all times in your life, spend time in prayer. Prayer is like a lifeline. It's like a phone call. However, you and I have the ability to reach out to the creator of this world. And in this scene of 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing, it doesn't mean that everything in life is prayer. However, it means in all of my life, I'm bringing my life before God. I'm spending time telling God about my life, being thankful for my life, being concerned about my life, and spending time in concern for others with the number one listener of the world. That's God. You see, we're trying to develop habits. We can study, grow in faith, and we can pray. There's a beautiful thing about prayer. It can happen anywhere, anytime. You can spend time in prayer as we end this program. You can spend time in prayer while you're at work or school or home. You can spend time in prayer in any scenes. But here's the idea. Spend time in your day developing prayer. Now there's something I need you to see about prayer. It happens in Luke chapter 11 verse 1. Now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place. When he sees that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. Here is Jesus. He spends time in prayer. And one comes to him and says, Lord, after his prayer is over, will you teach us to pray as John did? I imagine that those who could see Jesus pray, it was evident he was in a place and people knew he was at prayer. They didn't interrupt him. They didn't bother him. But when his prayer was over, they asked him to teach them to pray. Here's an idea. Study prayer. Learn who you should pray to. The world says you can pray to your ancestors, to Mary, to Jesus. But go study prayer. And see what the Bible teaches you about prayer. See what Jesus did in prayer. And develop two things today. Develop yourself in the habit of study and develop yourself in the habit of prayer. The disciples said, teach us to pray. You and I can be people who grow in prayer. And that's a habit that we can have. We can study. We can pray. But here's one that's kind of unusual. We need to be people who grow in prayer morals. Uh, Philippians 4 eight. finally brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Paul writing to the Philippian brethren, says all of this list of things, what's within true, noble, all of these things. But he says if there's any virtue, this word virtue here is the word morals. If there's anything that stands the test of what is right, if there's anything that is moral in this world, he says if it's praiseworthy, you spend time meditating on these things. Well, why would I ask you today to be someone who develops a life of morality, morals, a right thinking mind, a right living life. Well, here's something that's true, and, and I don't mean this in a negative way toward the world. It's been true since the beginning, but you and I can look at our world and we can see things that go against Scripture. Now, that doesn't mean that we should ever be mean or harsh or angry or, or vengeful to those that are against Scripture, but it tells us something. There is a difference in living in the world and inside of Christ. Morality matters. But notice what happens also in 2 Chronicles 28, 19. For the Lord brought Judah low because of Ahaz, king of Israel. For he had encouraged moral decline in Judah and had been continually unfaithful to the Lord. The only time we see the word moral or morals in the Old Testament or the New Testament, especially in the New King James Version, is right there in 2 Chronicles 28, 19. 
And an entire nation suffered because one man encouraged a moral decline. Here's something that would help us all if we knew how we should live. That doesn't mean you're going to be perfect, but it means that you can be faithful. You can right your wrongs. You can repent. You can turn back to God. If we live moral lives, boy, what would that change in our habits? What would that change in the things that we do? We're trying to determine today how we can take certain habits and make a better life. And grow in morals. Let's grow in truth. First uh, Peter two two, as newborn babes, babes desire this, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Here, Peter is writing about those who had just become Christians. And he uses this analogy that we understand. You do and I do with our own children. When your children were first born, they needed milk. They needed something that they could digest. But Peter goes on and says, you've got to grow in the Word. You can see that God is just, that God is right. But you've got to move on from that simple idea of things. You've got to develop your heart in truth. One thing I encourage you to do is study a variety of subjects. Study a variety of things that will make you get out of your comfort zone. I'm not talking about things that are unnecessary or things that are against Scripture, but if you haven't studied the Old Testament recently, dig into the Old Testament. Have you studied Revelation recently? Get in there. Have you studied Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? It's time. Look into things and grow and develop. Interestingly enough, Jesus says something about growing in truth. John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I know you agree with that. But let me ask you a question about growing in truth. Who did Jesus say that to in John 14? If you don't know, go to John 14 and read verse 1, and go all the way down to verse 5. Reread verse 6, and then make your way down through the chapter to learn more about this statement that we have heard so many times. Grow in truth. That's a habit. It'll force you to do things you've probably never done before. And finally, in these things we can do, let's be people who grow in control. Grow in control. Acts 24, 25. Now, as he reasoned about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was afraid and answered, Go away for now. When I have a convenient time, I will call for you. James 4, 7, Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. What we need is control of our lives. Felix here, Acts 24, 25. Paul is reasoning about righteousness, self-control, and judgment that's going to come. He didn't want to hear nothing about that. I don't want that. You and I, I, we, we need control in our lives because there is one who wants us to fail, James 4, 7. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. We need to be people who are in control of our lives, not turning it away for another time or another day, but in control with righteousness in mind, with judgment in mind, because here's the truth. On the day of judgment, we'll all stand there, but I will stand for me, and you will stand for you, and how you have controlled your life matters. Boy, that's deep. Boy, that's big. What we have found is five things. Faith, prayer, morals, truth, and control. And in all of these things, we've been trying to find ways that we can develop and maintain Christian habits. Now, the developing them is easy. We've seen that. But I want to share with you something that's real simple. It's five words. And it will make a difference in whether you will maintain them. Anyone can develop habits. But can we maintain these in our lives? Here it is. You ready? We must make a choice. You and I have to choose today who we're going to be tomorrow. And what we've got to do with that is we've got to look at the Scriptures, develop these habits in our lives, these characteristics, and we've got to choose, I'm going to maintain them. Because heaven 
is worth it all. Christ is, Christ is worth serving. And ladies and gentlemen, we've got to understand that if we'll take God's word, we'll live it in our lives, we'll be His. And all we have to do is determine that we want to walk with the word in our lives.